It all started back in 2017. At the time, I was 10 years old, and like a lot of kids my age, I loved video games. All the way from ancient games like the original Super Mario Bros. to the latest releases, I was hooked. My favorites were the simple web-based Flash games, you know the type. But eventually, I grew restless. Something was missing. Maybe the gaming industry just wasn't living up to my high standards of quality anymore. I couldn't identify the cause of my dissatisfaction, so I did something that, at that point, I never thought I would do. I started using my brain. Video games don't just appear out of thin air. That means someone, somewhere, is making them. People had made all of this possible. I just so happened to be a person. Maybe I could make video games too. And thus began a naive 10-year-old's quest to become a game developer. Obviously, I had no clue where to start. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on getting started with your first video game. I watched tutorials. I tried to learn how to write HTML websites. I studied the differences between C, C++, C++, and C Sharp. I remember trying to make a game in Ruby, whatever that is. I even installed Unity, but of course, my poor laptop couldn't even run it. Everything was resulting in failure. I had been defeated. Ten years old, and already all of my life's ambitions had been destroyed. Why did I ever think that I, of all people, could become a game developer? At this point, nothing had ever sounded more stupid. I was exhausted from trying too hard. Until one day, I discovered Scratch. It was perfect! Simple, colorful, easy and intuitive to use, a brilliantly constructed game development tool that was easily accessible to everyone, and you didn't need to pay a dime to use it. Things were looking up again. I had ideas, I had ambition, and after months of failure, I had an incredible means to bring it all together. Finally, it was time to make my first game. And here it is. Scholars will marvel at the beauty of this masterful creation for generations to come. I had achieved my dream and created a video game. But why stop there? In almost no time, I had created more games, each one greater than the last. Among others, we've got Baseball Catch, Monkey Hide and Seek, Pirate Dress Up. I think you get the idea. When I said a moment ago that scholars will marvel at the beauty of these games, I wasn't telling the truth. In fact, I was lying. These games are disgustingly terrible. I knew that if I wanted to make a game that would truly stand the test of time, I would need to become educated. So I opened Google and found a written tutorial on how to make a platformer game. Understand that this was at a time in history when people like Griffpatch weren't making high-quality step-by-step video tutorials like they are now. No, tutorials in September of 2017 required you to read multiple pages of almost 10,000 words of text if you wanted a full understanding of what you were creating, which I didn't, so I just snapped together code blocks according to the pictures. After a lot of hard work, I had created Elephant the Adventurer, a platformer game with 12 meticulously crafted level designs. It might not look like much, you actually might prefer permanent blindness over looking at it for another second, but this was the start of something great. By this point, I was obsessed with Scratch. I kept pumping out games, learning the delicate intricacies of computer science while creating memorable titles such as Letters, Penguins Love Fish, Piano, and whatever this is. Okay, can I just say something crazy? I love crazy. Skipping past several months of embarrassingly terrible projects, I finally made something that wasn't entirely awful. Panda Quest. Unlike everything I had made previously, it doesn't actually force me to cry myself into a fetal position when I look at it. Apparently, <clears throat> apparently the Scratch team, the group of people that run Scratch, agreed with me that it wasn't so bad, because they decided to slap it right on the website's homepage, where it received over 100,000 views. Now this was a huge honor. Out of millions of projects on Scratch, only a handful were ever featured on the homepage. I had never thought about it before, but it was possible that some people might actually start to play the games I was making. I was so excited I even bragged to my grandparents, telling them that I was gaining popularity on an obscure website they had never heard of. Obviously, I didn't stop. I kept at it, making more games, and even trying to make my own tutorials from time to time. Slowly but surely, I was gaining skills, but more importantly, popularity. My meaningless internet numbers were increasing. Shortly after, the Scratch team featured another one of my projects. By this point, I had several hundred followers and the quality of my games was improving fast. Then, around May of 2020, during a semi-important worldwide event I'm sure you'd rather not be brought up, I made The Nut Show, named this way because my thing from the beginning has been that I'm a chipmunk, and chipmunks frequently eat acorns, which are nuts, hence The Nut Show. Anyway, now this project is important, so I'll let you take a look at it so you're not confused going forward. 
Thank you for joining us today, uh, Mr. The Chair. Uh, I'm sure our audience would like to know a bit more about you. Do you have something you'd like to say to them? That's very interesting, Mr. The Chair. And guess what? For some reason, the Scratch team decided to feature this thing, and the community lost their minds. I instantly became known as the guy who made the nut show. My follower count doubled, and suddenly, all eyes were on me. So naturally, I made four more. Good afternoon, Mr. Taco Wizard. Welcome to the nut show. Thank you for joining us today, Chipmunk. It's great to have you on the nut show. Thanks, Chipmunk. It's great to be here. I hear that many couch potatoes are addicted to boring snacks and even more boring TV shows like this one. I know that all year everyone's been really worried about the virus. I mean, really curious to know what muffins do all the time. I know simply summarizing events in a YouTube video probably doesn't give a good suggestion of the amount of time it took for all of this to happen, so to clarify, I had been on Scratch for just over three whole years at this point, and now I was 13 years old and I suddenly had a terrible problem. I was getting bored. But this was everything I wanted. It took three years, but I was finally good at making games, and real people were playing them. Why was I restless again? Wasn't I living my dream? Why was I not perfectly content, even with thousands of people eagerly awaiting my next project? Once again, I decided to start using my brain. Maybe, deep down, making video games had never really been my dream, at least not exactly. Maybe it was something less specific than that. Maybe, since the beginning, my dream has been to create things I had never created before. And now that I had created video games, it was time to create something else. I had always liked to draw, and I was pretty good at it for my age. So when I heard about Inktober, a month-long challenge in October where every day you receive a prompt from a list and have to make an art piece based on that prompt, I knew what I should do next. But I had already drawn things on paper, I thought. I needed something more elaborate, I thought. So after a good five seconds of careful research, budgeting, and consideration, I rushed to the store and bought myself a drawing tablet. It was time for me to learn digital art. Incidentally, it's the same tablet I'm using for the animated bits in this video. Part of the Inktober challenge was posting your art online every day so other people could see it. I didn't have any other social media at the time. Should I use Scratch? Nah, I needed something new. Something extraordinarily unusual, I thought. And that's when I made my first YouTube channel. Not this YouTube channel, the one you're watching this video on. No, this channel was an entirely separate thing altogether. Obviously, I won't tell you what it is because I don't want you watching those videos. Anyway, I screen recorded time lapses of me drawing and posted the videos on YouTube. And that's how I became a YouTuber, kids. So instead of using OBS Studio to record these time lapses like any rational person, I opted for a paid program that happened to have a free trial. And you know what I did when the free trial expired? I uninstalled the program, then reinstalled it and got another free trial. I was a genius. Hopefully that's not illegal. Please don't put me in prison. Though for the entire month of October, I drew a new picture every day, posted it to YouTube, rinse and repeat until November, when I thought, hmm, I kind of want to make a video game. I have an idea. So I made another game, and in my humble opinion, it's the best one I had made up to that time. I posted it a bit too late for Halloween, so, uh... So then I made some more games, and these ones were actually good. We've got this platformer wizard quest, this game Scratch Run that's kind of like Geometry Dash, but not as good as Geometry Dash. Um, there's a ninja here, this sand game, but it's snow and not sand, and Among Us, but it's not really Among Us. It's just walking around the Skeld with nothing to do, ever. I also remade Tetris, then I remade Tetris again, because the first one wasn't very good. Then I made another platformer called Mellow, and not to brag or anything, but it got a million views and I made a whole video about it, which you should definitely watch after you're done with this one. And then I made The Kingdom of Noor. To this day, this might actually be my favorite game that I've ever made. And guess who else liked it? Actually a lot of people, and one of them was Griffpatch, who was actually the most famous person on Scratch. And he liked it so much that he followed me. Now you might think that that was a good thing, but since then, half the comments I've gotten are people being like, OMG, did you know Griffpatch is following you? Yes, I know. It's been two years since then. You can stop telling me now. Then I made a few more games. Rickrolled 50,000 people. That was fun. Remade every level of the original Super Mario Bros. Rickrolled 26,000 people for Halloween. Rickrolled 13,000 people for April Fool's Day. Then I remade Geometry Dash, but with eggs. And then I made a sequel to Mellow, the game that got a million views. Again, not to brag, of course. Which brings us to the present day, more than six whole years after a naive 10-year-old decided he wanted to make video games. I've spent a lot of time on Scratch, and it's given me the opportunity to make cool things, to meet amazing and interesting people, to learn, and to have fun. I love Scratch, and during my time there, I've learned that it doesn't matter if you make something dumb or ugly, 
or even horrifically nightmarish like, oh my God. It doesn't matter if you have one view or one million. What's important is that you don't stop trying to create the next thing that you've never created before. Just don't stop making new things like ever. Make new things forever.